First of all, right now I am feeling myself like a, like a foreign contaminant, being um, in a bit Google environment and Kotlin environment and Android environment, uh, as long as, you know, actually, I have an iPhone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and um, Google ecosystem, I mean, yes, I'm using um, Google search. My mail is on Gmail. But frankly speaking, the only tool I'm really using from Google is Google Maps. And that's a long story. So like a spoiler alert, I'm a very rare of a kind certified Maps API developer. Certification was uh, taken almost a lifetime ago. It's a second decade, uh, 2010. So these were days when Maps was pretty cool thingy and everybody think that we should have a map and they were trying to put map in all possible places and you know maps was free maps was cool map were able to help you somehow you don't have to think about how just add a map on your site and call today so once upon a time i was talking with alexey and he proposed me to talk about uh, an article i've written a couple of years ago and it was about uh, problems of a second dimension everything is simple in one dimension world but once there is a more than one dimension problem occur and map is a like a two-dimensional thing however later i got invited here and you know that's a friday that's a friday evening and i'm pretty sure like you don't want to listen about you know special feeling curve or like uh, you might want to know why map is round and the planet is circle and how that project uh, circle to the flat and you know like uh, maybe you seen these uh, funny pictures that greenland actually a little smaller than it is and there is uh, some reasons why this project is picked and there is a uh, limitations bonuses pluses not talk for actually friday night and it also was uh, about word vec or how you can just put multi-dimensional things into the, some magic bucket and understand how they're connected. And this is basically a dimension reduction algorithm. And uh, especially you don't want to know about, you know, some key neighbor uh, clustering. Anyway, this talk is about maps. It's not particular about Google Maps and Frankly speaking, it's not particular about maps, but it is about maps. So let's go to the very beginning. Once upon a time, I decided to double check what is available for rent in some distinct area. So I opened my map and I went to that area. And I, uh, frankly speaking, lost a little bit. So I double checked which maps I have on my phone. I had Google Maps, I have Apple Maps, I had OpenStreetMap. Okay, so I double check, do any of them knows where you, uh, I am right now, and I found that interesting. A couple of years ago, Apple has a way better coverage than Google. It actually was able to explain where am I, and basically it was a, some trail out of the forest. But that's not really interesting part. The interesting part was while the Apple map was containing a lot of information, that was not really helping me to get out of that place. So it was the same Sydney, it was the same ground, it was a few different maps representing that ground in a few different ways, and some of them were helping me, and some of them were not. This is why the name of this topic is map is not a territory. Map is not the territory it represents, and value it for the structure it provides. It's hard to understand what it means. There is a Wikipedia article about map territory relation. It's actually very boring. There is an easy way to explain this one. Menu is not a meal. And receipt is not a dish. So when you're going to a restaurant, you're going actually for the food, you're asking for menu, and it somehow explains you what you can order. But uh, menu is not the meal. And blueprint is not a building. If you want to build something, you're first having a blueprint. Basically, I want building. 
when you have that building as a reflection of your blueprint, and after that you have new blueprints for pipes, for electricity, which are another reflection of the actual building. And they are all valued for the information they provide, and that information is not actual building. You don't need the building. A little different example, something like uh, quite different from the previous one is GPS is not your location. However, many applications actually think that GPS is your location. Let's not forget that GPS has a first accuracy, and second, it has limitation. My favorite problem is that you are going into the lane curve tunnel, and then map thinking that you are there or you are here, it's telling you many different variants, but all of them would be untrue. It's still a secret to me how map, especially when it knows that you're driving the car, also thinks that you can teleport. <laughs> Android users are happy to have thing called sensor fusion, which combines information from GPS, from compass, and from accelerometer to derive a better signal, and they can tell you, yes, GPS actually no longer knows where you are, but the compass know that you haven't changed your direction, Accelerometer know that you haven't driven much, so maybe you're here. And then map can snap you to the road as long as it may know that you cannot teleport. Like uh, for some applications, it's time to accept. Things can happen and things may not happen. In any case, this is map, and we value map not for the map, uh, for the map, not for satellite. You know, satellites, um, they look pretty, but as your electrician cannot see wires behind a drywall, you cannot see roads behind, behind a tree canopy. So you might need to add a value to it, reduce some noise, and add some signal. And how to do that is a very complex uh, question. So I have an example of the same element on the map for a couple of years, and every year, Designers like, um, hmm, we need to hide something and add something. A year later, we need to hide and add something different. A year later, the same. A year later, the same. And this is uh, just example of one cartography application. Everyone follows different uh, approaches. And right now, if you open any map possible, you will see that they look differently, and they all provide different signal. So they all value roads over buildings, buildings over roads, small roads over highways or the other way around. Maybe some of them changing what they value depending on the time of the day, when you're going to work, when you're at work, when you're going back. It depends. Hopefully, that's like a 100% not our problem. Styling the maps is a big job, but let's keep a job to the guys who are actually making the maps. We are not going to do that. We're going to build what we can build on top of the maps. And I was lucky enough to build something on top of the maps, build the maps, and actually also build something below the maps, being Maps API developer for quite a while. And um, yeah, over the span of almost a decade, I was also answering questions in different developer groups. And there is uh, two kinds of questions I really like. First question is like, uh, hey, how we can do something? And the answer is very simple. As long as there is just a few mathematical things which can drive you crazy, and the rest is a, I don't know, high level, high school math. There is a really nothing hard, and everything you can imagine invented 50 years ago. So there is no real problem with how, how to do something. But there is another how, how to do something fast, as long as, um, like, uh, this experience happened many years ago, and still there is a multiple devices which are not that fast, and if you want to display a bit more than nothing, or a bit more complex than simple, you're going to have a performance problem. And there is a multiple ways how to do something performant, how to fake something, how to pre-render something, and it all depends on the use case, but it's actually solvable. The more important question and the more important uh, case is when the same people are reaching you and asking you how to not do something. Imagine a situation that you have a lot of data. 
mega, a lot of data. And you want to display it on your map, and you know how to do that, and technically speaking, you know how to do it performant, but everything has limits. You cannot display that amount of data. So you have to decide how not to do something as long as no choice. And this is where the like, real problem lies. It's like uh, less is more, but how to decide when it's like uh, too much and when to decide that it's less enough and how to judge something, I, I really hate to make any decisions. There is actually like a two ways you can use, maybe more, I know too. And the first one is like a just change the game rules. If you're looking something and you understand that you cannot do that, the easiest way is to look at a different angle and maybe um, do something totally different. There is uh, no real advice here, just um, every time you're trying to do something, think about maybe you don't need to do that, maybe there is uh, something totally different you cannot imagine right now, but give it a shot. If your imagination is not that great and majority doesn't have that great imagination or doesn't have enough drinks, so you have to drop information. And it's a little stupid, so you may be paid for information. That's your very valuable information, and now you have to basically get rid of half, like a, a big half of it. Not really fair. And okay, what means drop? If you want to remove something, you always have uh, two choices. Choice number one, if you have uh, information structured in some way when you can have rules. When you can say that I'm not going to display, for example, houses if they are too small to be displayed. I'm not going to display small roads if they are too small to be displayed. I'm not going to display regions if they are too large to be displayed. There is uh, rules, you can follow them. For majority of use cases, there is no rules. These are just information and good luck. So in that case, you have two options. So how to get less from what you have too much. One way is a map reduce. Fancy thing invented by the Google when you're just having your source information, you're doing transformation and getting less information from it and you can repeat that cycle multiple times. And the second idea is to cluster the information. So somehow combine what you have into basically the same information, just less. The first way is creating something different from what you have. The second way, creating the same, just uh, less. Example of uh, map reduce can be heat map. You had the points, you cannot display that amount of points. It's just not possible to many. So you're generating a heat map, and here you go. This one is actually a distribution of Wikipedia articles over the world. And uh, sometimes it can be just useful to give you a signal. So this is a distribution of Wikipedia articles in Australia. Yeah, I mean, we know where cities are, we know where desert are. That's all we might want to know. With clusterization, everything is a little simpler. You had too many points, a lot of them were overlapping each other, and you're applying magic clusterization, and here you go, you got clusters, you got clusters, you just have less information to render, and more importantly, you have predictable higher limit of how much you can display. So no matter how many information you have on the map, the clusters never can reach some threshold as long as they will like a cluster. Clustering uh, on the maps is an interesting subject as long as in the very beginning it was a common understanding that you actually cannot have clustering on a map as long as algorithms are too complex. Then someone like, um, hmm, what about we are not going to use complex algorithms, just uh, divide everything to the grid and collapse it, and people like, uh, no, like, uh, this is not how clustering works. And this is actually not how clustering works, but like, uh, this is how clustering actually can work in your browser, and why not? So I have a very good example to demonstrate a little problem with 
what happens if you don't have any data management and you can reproduce uh, the same trick by yourself. I can just, uh, after this talk. So step number one, you're going to domain Kamayu and asking for buy something in Sydney. So mm, there is a lot of properties. Then you're making a zoom out and um, there is a still a lot of properties. Actually you can see it's displaying 200 results of 1,000 something. You're going one step up. And yeah, there is a, a lot of things to, to get. The problem is already 200 uh, results from 4,000. You're going one more up and yeah, I mean, go and buy, easy. But let's focus on this area. So actually I lived there and uh, yeah, like so not very good business probably in that area. However, if you will zoom in, you will find that actually like uh, there is a 200 results of a bit more than 200 results. So what happening? The answer number one is a standard one. You're holding it wrong. That's uh, from Steve Jobs. You have information and you want to display it for a particular case and this particular case is buy something in Sydney. If you're zooming out, map cannot hold that many information and map doesn't have to hold that many information. When you are in a, like a hunting your next apartment, when you want to buy a house, you're never looking at the city level. You are on a road level. So if domain comma you is not connecting that uh, case, that's totally okay. I was using domain wrong. And secondly, if you will actually zoom out, you'll see technically speaking, it showing everything you want. Like, hey, there is something there, please zoom in to understand what we can give you. The question is why some data usually displayed and some data is not usually displayed. People uh, probably already understand that there is a city and there is a skyscrapers, there is a, a lot of people and there is a suburbs where not many people are living and houses are small and not many things are also happening there. So if we get a frequency of an event, frequency of buying or selling something in a city is higher than in the suburbs. As a result, if you have a, a, like a limit on your data, you say, can you give me a top 200 of something? You are more likely to get more frequent results. This is basically the like a basics of sampling. What is more uh, likely to happen will happen. And if something is less likely to happen, it might never happen. So this one is called as a three sigma rule. And uh, yeah, it's a normal distribution. In the middle, we have uh, basically a city where things are likely to happen and then they fade. And if you have too many information to display, you have to, you have to drop, you have to lose your information, your valuable information somehow. So let's um, I can just put more things in a flight. And this is the main kind of you. That's me trying to hack it and this is a database. And there is a few limits. So first limit is on a CPU. Someone decided that Google Maps can uh, show more than 200 uh, markers, or maybe we don't have to display more than 200 markers, it was a design decision. But yeah, I'm not going to display you more. And there is also a network. And network also can be a little problem, as long as you cannot send 2,000 of markers. It will be too much and not needed, something, something else. If you will think about what is a bigger constraint, the user rendering on a client device or network, it all depends on the use case. In case of uh, domain comma U, the CPU, the client would be a little more problematic. So I think we can send more data initially to the client and then on the client, somehow adapt to the resolution, something, something, and we need to add some, you know, brains. So we got uh, more data on the client. Still, it's a subject of sampling. Still, it might be missing, 
but we have some flexibility to understand what we can do to make it better. And um, yeah, maybe just add more pieces. So let's add one more piece on the backend. So let's get way more data from a backend. Let's uh, cluster it a little bit to collapse uh, uh, something you can rent in a single apartment. There is a quite often case when uh, two apartments you can rent in one building. You don't need to send them all uh, to your client. Better send an hour building to indicate you can do something there. So we have brands on client, we have brands on the backend. We have the site, the database, the user, which also clicking some buttons. And uh, from some point of view, maybe I'm trying to overcomplicate the system. There is uh, so many more moving pieces. But every piece is actually not that hard and technically speaking, not that important. But more importantly, that the, the whole is greater than some of its parts. So even if every piece is not doing much, once you combine it, they can provide you a better result. And it's not applicable to the maps, it's applicable to everything. So you're taking a Coca-Cola, you're taking Mentos, combining, and the result would be like a way, way more than the, like uh, these two parts. This is called as a Weisenberg law of composition, and it has the opposite form, as like um, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. So if you combining all the parts, you can get more than they are, but also if you will like uh, value each part individually and sum their value, it can be also more than your result as long as you're going to get from every piece a bit less that it can provide. Let's imagine like a shared microservice working for two things and you're going to use only like a part of that. So every piece can be valued by itself and that's uh, uh, the problem that you don't have to think about uh, every particular part and a whole part. You have to think about all the parts as a whole and whole as a sum of the parts. And this is basically the same, like a map is not a territory, it represents a correct, a, like a similar structure. And uh, sometimes you are building not something to look right, you are doing that to work right. And if it's providing uh, usefulness and value, that's the way to go. So let's compare maps. And uh, sometimes they are a little quadratic, sometimes they are very roundish. So geometry on the maps is a quite complex thing here, and um, it came from uh, multiple different sources. And uh, once upon a time, there was a startup called Wikimapia, when you can actually edit everything in real life. So you can say, I want to edit the contour of this building, you can save, and it will be instantly redrawn. The problem is, like, uh, this happened 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, there was no way you can render this geometry on a client. And technically speaking, it was no way you can render that geometry on a server. You can do it on a multiple servers. So you have to split single thing into multiple to allow horizontal scaling. And also you have to make some compromises. By compromises, I mean, for example, the geometry of a bigger Sydney area is actually a little too much to be rendered. It contains uh, too many points. So to render it, you have to first simplify it. Even after simplification, uh, it will be too much to be sent on a client, to be like a display, to act as a target for a mouse. So it has to be simplified again, but a little differently. As long as every shape has a uh, own um, specificity and buildings, roads, coastal lines, they might need a little different simplification algorithms to make it work efficient. And um, if we're comparing uh, Wikimapia, which is a little outdated right now in Google, you can say that uh, Google has way better shapes. So this one is low polygon, that one is very good. 
question is, if you are thinking about maps as something giving you a value for navigation, do you need these details? That's a question uh, many people were trying to answer for quite a while. And for example, let's compare Wikimapia and OpenStreetMap. So obviously, uh, Wikimapia was not as successful in the maps area as OpenStreetMap, and it doesn't have the tools uh, to build actual roads you can use for navigation. However, many people was asking Wikimapia for multiple years about we don't need the cartographical part of you. We want informational part of you. And uh, like uh, this one knows as a Wikimapia current, and this one known as a Wikimapia classic. It was just rectangles pointing. That's like a island, and there is a something on island, something else. You can click anywhere and get information. So it was a valor. It was uh, providing, and the initial version was so far from territory and so far from a map, and the new version is closer to the territory and way closer to a map, but this one, people actually liked them more, as long as this is what was useful for them. And every time you're doing something, like a question, do you want to make it right, cool, complicated, or actually useful? So, you know, once upon a time it was a good forward uh, about let's do everything mobile first. Then let's do everything accessible. What about doing something cognitive first? Something you can understand, you can use, and it doesn't have to be fancy. It has to be efficient. Uh, as I understand, uh, JetBrains are now somehow friends of this uh, place, and for me, the difference between Google Maps and Apple Maps was always the same as Visual Code Studio and JetBrains products. I can use JetBrains products and I can see the code. In a Visual Code Studio, which is basically the same, it's very good, I cannot see. It's probably my personal problem, but we have the same code, the same territory, with a different representation, and uh, one is useful for me, and now one is not. And this is like a valuable to remember. It's very easy to forget what is right, what is wrong, what you have to do and what you haven't. But just look at the map and you're using that every day to remind yourself that something is only accountable for its usefulness. Yeah, that was all. Thank you, Anton. Uh, we take questions now. Don't be shy, you get swag, yeah. Hello, Anton. Uh, I just looked at your LinkedIn profile and I noticed you are running also eSociED uh, website. Yeah. Is it still going on or, and is it just for Russia or more countries? Uh, the last code change was more than six years ago. So oh, okay. it's still working, but it's not running. Because I think it's that website is kind of relevant to, to your speech tonight, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was uh, something similar to Wikimapia with uh, idea to place photos on a map, mark some places without any cartograph cartographical things, just information. So ESOCED can be used sort of uh, around the world, right? From and Technically speaking, yes, but I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> okay. I'll try it. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Any other questions? There you go. Thanks for your talk, and uh, you said that map should be efficient, or the product should be efficient. I do totally agree, but how would you measure it? What would be the metrics of efficiency? Uh, that's another problem. So, as I mentioned. Bing Maps, Google Maps, Yahoo Maps, uh, OpenStreetMap, Mapbox, uh, they, everybody has a very different designs with uh, some features being more visible, some features being less visible. And I really think that they all have a great PMs, and great developers, and great analytics, but we have a different decisions. So 
for me personally, I just get used to Google Maps. I can use them for my efficiency. And even if Google Maps are also changing, uh, like uh, I am adapting. So it depending on a uh, task. There is an interesting uh, application. It called All Trails. It's for hiking, and we are using uh, maps you cannot find in any other place. We have some like uh, levels, and when you're going to hike, you have to understand it's not like a flat surface. It will be hike. So for that case, Google, Sack, uh, everybody else also. Um, their maps, which are more about topological maps, very good. So it's all about use case. Thanks. Hi, uh, thank you for your impressive presentation. Uh, I have uh, noticed that some of the country has, when you zoom the map, uh, some of the com co country has the uh, clarity, like if you zoom in the Sydney city, you'll get more clear uh, uh, satellite view. But if you select like country like Nepal, India, uh, when you zoom in, you will not get uh, clarity uh, on the satellite view. So do you think is this the uh, country policy or is because uh, of profitability of the company? What do you think? So uh, satellite images are actually a market. So there is a satellites uh, flying and Google are not owning them. You have to buy these photos on a schedule. Sometimes uh, you're paying for high quality photos. Sometimes you're not paying for quite high, uh, high quality photos. Sometimes you're launching uh, drones. For example, uh, Bing has an aerial view, which is a little different. And uh, when you're uh, switching from like a satellite to aerial, you can like feel that tilt. So what was filming was uh, way lower. It was like an airplane or something else. They were doing that by themselves. And for example, Bing has a better, like a way better image of my house than Google. So it's a market, uh, all the images are actually very expensive. So for getting good uh, satellite images for Sydney can be understandable. Getting something like a forest and so on where people don't, like, uh, don't live or there is a, like a just no big reason. It's a basically a finance. You cannot have uh, satellites for whole world. And at least in the past, everything was manually processed. So even if you have images, you can buy them. You don't have a people to stitch them. Any other question? I just want to finish with funny question if no one dares. Uh, how do you get a job? Did you ever try to uh, research how do you get a job driving that Google car, you know, which has got all those cameras? <laughs> that should be a cool job. Yeah, so not working on a Google, I have no idea, but I had a friend uh, who built that system by himself in a backpack. And uh, yeah, he was uh, going in some restaurants, apartments, uh, skyscrapers to take a photos and was, yeah, that was a good business. Mm -hmm.